Hello, I'm Steve Proctor, and for the next few minutes, we'll be talking about profilometers or roughness uh, measurement devices. There are several kinds of different devices we have, two of them here that we're actually looking at, uh, just depending on who makes them and how they've decided to manufacture them. There are varying degrees of precision and accuracy between different types of uh, profilometers, uh, from high end to lower end, shop floor to laboratory type. Uh, they do consist usually of a readout and a detector. Uh, the detectors on some models can usually be removed and mounted remotely, all sorts of different configurations, uh, while other types can be set up in different configurations to measure on different axes. Primarily, these are used uh, to check the surface texture of any particular part that's coming off of the assembly line. So you have grinding, you have your lapping, you have your milling, and they're going to produce different surfaces. Depending on the specifications, you're going to want to know exactly what that surface is and how it's supposed to be uh, applied. So you actually have these uh, set up, and turning their power on, some a little more complicated than others, but mostly just turning it on, setting the part, here we'll use for example a roughness standard, setting the part so that it lays and the movement of the head will be perpendicular to the grain. So we'll hit start on a very simple model. More complicated models, you're going to have to spend a little bit of time setting the machine up. Different lays, different uh, roughness specifications are going to require different setup parameters, different cutoff values, different evaluation lengths. You're going to want to refer to, particular, to the particular standard that you are uh, adhering to. You have American standards, Japanese standards, European standards that all have a slightly different take on how something should be done, what those cutoff lengths are, what those cutoff values are, evaluation lengths, uh, and the type of tip that's to be used for the particular thing that you're measuring. Uh, all just depends on that. See your specification for that. Sometimes that'll be on your drawing. Sometimes you'll have to go to the book to find that. Uh, but either way, what we find is a good repeatable reading here. I was expecting 117 micro inches in average roughness, and I got 115.6, well within the tolerance of the device. One of the things you'll notice among all the specifications are the different types of um, measurements that are being taken. You have RA, RZ, uh, RM, RMS, all these types of different roughness standards. Which one you're going to be needing to, to calibrate with or to measure to is going to be called out in your specification. If it's not, double check that somebody knows exactly what you're looking for. All of these numbers mean something different about the surface you're measuring. The biggest measurement errors that you can get when using a profilometer is setting it up incorrectly. So when you're looking at a particular measurement, you're going to make sure you have your cutoff values, your evaluation lengths, all of this set up properly for the particular measurement you're taking. If you're going for too high a measurement with too short of an evaluation length, you're not going to get the right measurement. It'll be perhaps intolerance, but it won't be representative of what you're actually measuring. And this is the biggest problem. The next biggest problem that most people get is they're actually not crossing the grain. And so as you have a particular um, milling going on, it's going to come across a particular grain. You're going to want to cross that grain so that you're getting a texture of it versus just sitting down in the trough of a mill pattern. Cleaning and storing is relatively simple. What you're going to do is use a very mild cleaner. You're going to make sure the case is kept clean. You're going to make sure that the detector is kept clean. The detector here is actually a piece of uh, diamond or steel, depending on who the manufacturer is and what standard you're going to. So you're going to be very careful about cleaning this. Just block this a little bit to make sure there's no debris on it. And then you're going to make sure that it's stored away in its case. Uh, devices such as these, relatively simple. Uh, keep everything simple and clean. Make sure that we do the same thing with our detector here, and then from here, simply fold it away, and there's actually an included case that slips over to protect the, uh, the detector. Uh, and so it slips away in its own little case. Each one is usually given a uh, storage case by the manufacturer and easy enough to use. Slip it in, close it up, keep it clean.